Good enemy AI can make or break your game's combat, but what makes some AI better than others? It's more than just being smart. Convincing AI will meet players' expectations. For example, you would expect zombies to wildly charge at you and a wolf pack to try and surround and attack you. There are examples of enemies that may not fall into an exact stereotype, but will behave in ways the player can learn and later anticipate. The most common example, of course, being the enemies in Halo. I hope to follow this example with my game, which includes both ranged enemies and melee enemies. Though both are important, I found convincing melee enemy AI to be harder, thus will be the focus of this video. There are several things I needed for the enemies. Pathfinding, steering, and their unique behavior, which will distinguish different types of enemies from each other as I continue to add more into my game. First, for the pathfinding, steering is a bit more complicated. Though it's easy to code a simple move towards the player action, once you start to introduce more than one enemy actor, they can start to stack and collide with each other, which is an immersion-breaking embarrassment. For my more elegant steering, I was inspired by the Boyd's video of Sebastian and one of the combat videos of Game Endeavor. Both are fantastic videos and are linked in the description. My combat is a healthy mix of both strategies. At its core, each enemy is still trying to run towards the player. However, I made the enemies aware of their surroundings with what I'll call a steering range. The elegance begins if an obstacle or another enemy falls within this steering range. This will modify the direction of the enemy's velocity. Think of this whole thing working like a magnetic force. Just like with magnets, the strength of this push depends on the proximity. This technique still applies even when there are several enemies or objects interacting with each other. With just some basic vector math, the resulting direction is calculated and normalized by the enemy's max speed. Though these parameters did require a lot of tweaking, I got to the point where I was satisfied. For the last item of the checklist, for this basic enemy, if they're in a group, I want them to try to surround the player if they're out in the open, and even try to corner him or her if they're near a wall. I accomplish the surround behavior by actually having the player character inform the enemies of where they should move to surround him or her. The colored spheres that you're looking at here is just a debug widget I added in to show where the enemies are trying to go. It changes based on how many enemies are around and the player's proximity to walls or obstacles. But to allow the enemies to take into account their environment, the player unit must know if he or she is cornered. I achieved this by using short ray casts around the player. If any hit an obstacle, it alters the enemy's surround behavior. If one vector hits, but not its neighbors, it is assumed to be an obstacle, and it just ensures that an enemy doesn't try to run through it. That would make for unconvincing AI. Depending on how many neighboring rays are colliding determines if the player is by a wall or by a corner. All of these strategies together allows an arbitrary number of enemies to surround and corner the player. Next, I want the enemies to try to avoid attacking the front of the player if the shield is up. Since my plan is to later add a parry system, I don't want the player to constantly be in a waiting game of blocking and parrying just to counterattack. This could make for boring and repetitive combat, as warned in GMK's combat video also linked in the description. I try to prevent this behavior by stopping enemies from attacking if you have your shield up and looking directly at them. This is done simply by adding a region in front of the player. If the player is blocking and an enemy is in the zone, back up and don't attack. There is a lot to go, but that is the progress thus far. Please consider liking if you enjoyed yourself, subscribing if you'd like to see more, and I hope you have a great day.